Hi everybody, I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Raleen Shaw, who is an incredible star from Indonesia. I believe you're just off a plane not too long ago, yeah. but to introduce yourself to this audience, because you are an actress, you're a philanthropist, you, you do many things. What, uh, what do you want to be known as? I just want to be known as uh, an individual from Indonesia that has a growth mindset and is a curious person learning new things and bringing back some wisdom and know-hows back to my country because I do look up to the U.S. in terms of entertainment, especially film. Um, I mean, it is more developed. There's been decades of work that's been done here, whereas in Indonesia, the first movie by an Indonesian was in the 19, in 1950 by Usman Ismail. That was the first movie. So this is like, I'm probably just second, if I push it, third generation of film actresses yeah. in Indonesia. So it's, but, it's fairly new. But, but at the same time, we were talking about the fact that an Indonesian movie was trending, number one, worldwide. This year. They, there have been great strides in the film industry right. um, in Jakarta and elsewhere. Indonesia. So when you think about um, building your career and the opportunities you have there, do you stay very focused on Indonesia or do you start to look toward the rest of Asia, the U.S.? I mean, honestly, as an actress, of course your dream is spread your wings and to see how they do things abroad and to work with amazing, brilliant creatives here. I mean, the directors here are phenomenal. They're, the people I used to look up to, I mean, the movies I used to watch when I was young. So, of course, the dream is to be able to come here. Indonesia and Hong Kong, uh, it doesn't really, uh, there is no switch over because of the language barrier, yeah. maybe culturally also very right. different. But popular culture starts in America. I mean, I hope one day Indonesia will be able to also influence popular culture. But as for now, there is no real... Um, actor in film or television that's Indonesian descent that's based here yet. So I mean, you why not be, try? I could, could be the first one. You could one. be the first. You yeah. could, what, what's your dream project over here? My dream project? Wave of one, it happens really, and what, what happens for you here? I think a dream project would be working with Scorsese or Steven Spielberg. And not to have any questions asked about my character, just trust them with a vision, yeah. Is that something you face, having questions asked about your character? And when you say that, like, give me a sense of, like, what's been your favorite role that you've played thus far in your career? I think my favorite character was actually the last movie I was in. It's called Orang Kaya Baru or Nuba Rich. Mm -hmm. Just as a young girl coming out of college, just started college, coming out of high school, actually. Um, she has a lot of issues with her identity, like who is she in this space, um, her friends bully her and then once her dad passes away, he leaves a fortune for her and society just treats her differently. And uh, she also changes because of that. But it wasn't long term and she loses it all and just to see how money and how public perception and societal acceptance can also change you and your behavior and your motives in life. Because she was so, she's such an academic, she was so intellectual, she was working hard towards some goals that I felt was like very inspiring for a young woman her age. Yeah. But then once she already had the means to do what she wanted to do, she kind of lost the need to be on that journey. To strengthen herself. That sounds like something that would touch a star on a very personal level because you must have experienced some version of that as you've become wildly popular in Indonesia. I don't know if I'm wildly popular. Okay, popular. Let's go back. <laughs> let's let's ratchet that back to popular. Give you more runway ahead. But have you felt that? Like, as you have you felt your own choices and your own interests have shifted as your career has grown and your prominence has grown? Definitely so. Um, just because I feel like as I grow and mature and become more conscious, I do want to meet more people and uh, I want to meet more people in different circumstances than me outside of my industry, outside of my country, with different views, doing amazing things, innovative things. Um, and I, I feel like in Indonesia sometimes when people meet me, 
they already have a perception before they even meet me. They already have a story and you're kind of boxed up because, oh, you're this actress or you're glamorous. Yeah. Or they see you as a diva or whatever that comes with being a female that's strong and feminine and, you know, in your power. Um, but somehow that kind of personality or persona in the West is so much more celebrated than in the East. It's interesting, you, every actress, not everyone, but the, there's so much immediate interest in creative control, in understanding your personal brand and, and how you love, almost like an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Do you think about it that way or is it a different approach, you know, in Indonesia? How much creative control are you able to have and do you look to other models of what you now do with it? I've actually had no role models. I had to learn on the job. And I take every offer as an opportunity to learn about the offer itself and about myself, how I feel towards it and yeah. how I think I can leverage my brand or if it could be a win-win. Because I think ideally, if you make, uh, if you accept a production or you accept a project more like it, it has to be a win-win for both. You know? How would you define your personal brand? I know it's all hard to do because that's not how we're taught to think about ourselves, but what do you what do you what do you want it to be? I want it to be an actor, an actress that's balanced, you know, that has a nuanced personality, multidimensional, different aspects to her, and a human being, you know, not always expected to be perfect, but definitely balanced. And I think it's very important for me for people to learn tools uh, for well-being, discipline, and joy. You know, a lot of actresses, they get carried away in the lifestyle, and when you meet them, they're not too present, or it doesn't seem authentic, or they don't really feel vibrant or bring joy to the table. So I always like to work on myself so that when I do meet people, when I am on the set, you know, I have extra energy and I'm pleasant within myself. So I'm not taking from anyone when I'm when I'm in a situation. I'm just giving whatever I have and then, you know, replenish my energy after. And replenishing means connecting with my family. It means different things for different people. But for yeah. me, it's connecting with nature, my family, being home in Indonesia. I think it's important also to have a concept of home that's not a place, that's people. Yeah. And in LA, I feel like I came here before the pandemic to do some comedy classes at Upright Citizens Brigade. Is the sense of humor similar here than it is? Oh, it's so different. Because I, I grew up in the UK, it's very different British yeah. humor and American humor. How is yeah. Indonesian humor and Indonesian humor, humor is pretty slapstick. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's a lot different. But I mean, I grew up watching American shows, so yeah. I kind of get it. But. I honestly find British humor the best. I love the dry humor, the sarcasm, the wit. Yeah. It's very sophisticated, it's intellectual. And uh, I mean, I went to a British boarding school even though I don't have the accent. Oh, that's, yeah, that's. So I kind of understand it. Um, I understand it much more and I enjoy it much more. It intrigues me. But studying here as well, it was more technical. It was more technical and they had a lot of foreign students too, so I didn't feel alone. Let me ask you, and I want to make clear that, you know, it shows an incredible lack of nuance to be asking an actress from Indonesia about what's happening in South Korea. I say that, but I'm very curious about how the conversations around mental health and and the pressure of stardom plays out in different parts of the world. I think about South Korea just because, you know, we, we see some young stars who've frankly killed themselves there, and it's quite an industry. And here you've seen a lot of discussion around actresses and how women are portrayed in Hollywood. What is the conversation and the pressures like in Indonesia? Since you said it's it's an industry that has been developing very quickly, do, do you how do you think about the conversation being different in the same way comedy is different? Do you think that the issues that people are dealing with are different too? Are you specifically talking about mental health? Mental, well, yeah, mental health, like, you're absolutely right, I should unpack that. Let's start with mental health, because that's something even during the pandemic we suddenly talk about in a way we didn't talk about two years ago. Is that happening there too? I think it's happening in every industry where people are disconnected. 
in many ways we're hyper connected because of smartphones but in a human way we're disconnected because we're not present you know the the smartphone it's like many open tabs just like your brain when you're stressed many open tabs but you're not really there yeah and i think that breeds mental health issues secondly for women we have a lot of mental health issues because people are judging your looks all the time because it's an aesthetic business you're on camera so it's audio visual right yeah it's your voice it's also how you look and there's just beauty standards in different parts of the world that is uh that's just almost impossible to be honest like the koreans have it hard because they're expected to be of a certain way look a certain way they have very high beauty standards in my opinion indonesia yeah. is starting to shift there's some film actresses they're um highly celebrated like tara basro for example yeah. that's just embracing her her womanly figure um post pandemic you know we're human we change because the lifestyles change and uh indonesians they tend to for the beauty campaigns they tend to want to use fairer pan asian looking girls such as me but most indonesians i mean indonesians are very varied like we're super diverse It's a massive country there's 300 massive ethnic three. groups yeah with their yeah. own languages dialects with their own massive cultures. population many islands yeah, yeah. so yeah, but the average canteen girl or l'oreal girl used to look just you know fair tall uh skinny but now they're trying to shift that they want it to look like the the average girl because indonesians are beautiful they're tan um maybe not as tall but i think what's most beautiful about indonesian women is that they care and they're genuine and most of them they they're very proud of their background like their family background here it's very individualistic like you meet someone you don't really know where they're coming from yeah. what kind of family background in indonesia you're always talking about your family or where you come from it's very important right the past is as important as as a future in a way because it kind of shaped you to be the way you are right now yeah of course the most important is the present i want to ask you 5 years from now how, how, what do you want to be doing that you're not doing today and i know you're also we didn't talk about philanthropy i know you're very involved in that give us just give us a vision for the brand Raleen the person Raleen well i hope 5 years from now i would be able to have an international career that i'd be able to be able to zip off and do a movie here and do a movie in toronto mm-hmm. you know have that flexibility and work with amazing credible international cast and crew um another thing i guess back in my country i would love to be able to probably have a school for acting and a production house of my own because through all that international exposure i would have learned a lot of new things here so that's my dream i wish you the best of luck and thank, thank you, you so much, much for joining us thank you us. for having me